go. All right. Hello and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker and I'm your host. And I tell you this every time that I'm really looking for and looking around and making sure that we have some of the best people on this show or look for guests who can really add value to your life and help you to work smarter. So Deb Lee is here today and I'm excited to have her. She's a certified professional organizer, speaker, Evernote certified consultant, and the woman behind D. Allison Lee LLC. And she's a self-subscribed appaholic. Some of you can relate, I'm sure. <laughs> She's also a digital productivity coach, which helps small business owners and companies, uh, company founders master the leverage and leverage technology to increase productivity. So Deb, without further ado, tell us, uh, welcome and, and tell well, us about you. Deb. Well, thank you for having me. I love being here. Um, and I love talking about productivity. So I am one of those people that likes to put productivity with technology. I know some people have a little bit of a difficult relationship with tech and with apps, but I like to find ways to have the tech help us to do the things that we need to do to maybe add a little bit of automation so that we can focus on the things that we should be focusing on instead of trying to figure out the tech. So that's kind of my approach <laughs> to so why productivity. Why productivity though for you? Like what's your background that you, um, you know, you're a professional organizer. Yep. And, um, you know, so what, what, makes you love and be passionate about helping people to be more productive or, or helping yourself to be more productive? So as a professional organizer, back in, when I started, I would help people organize their stuff. I would organize their physical things in their offices and in their homes, because that clutter would often impact, you guessed it, their productivity. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to manage their household. And a lot of times I was getting questions about how do I handle my time? So it was stuff and time and time just kept coming up and then as my life changed I sort of you know sort of pivoted and sort of changed directions just ever so slightly so I don't do the physical stuff anymore and I just sort of really focus in more on the productivity um the physical stuff comes up if I'm working with a client where I go into their office and we're talking productivity but we're resetting their desk because oftentimes the desk is it's the hub, right? It's the hub of the, the main space. It's where you sit or stand, depending on the kind of desk you have. Right. And if that is cluttered, or if you have too many things there, or if you don't have it laid out the way that works for you and your brain and your work style, then it can impede you. So it may not be the main part of what I do anymore, but it sort of comes up every so often, but time management, how to use your time, how to save time. It's funny, we talk about time like it's this tangible thing. You can't hold yeah. it. And like we can control it. it, like time but management. I, Why do I we know. even use that expression? It's a, it's we a are not term. managing time. There's 24 You're hours not. a day and it will exactly. tick by no matter <laughs> what you do, it's still going to go tick on. So it's still <laughs> going to be the same, but you can manage your energy. I talk about that a lot. Right? So I agree it's, with that. Precisely. Manage your energy, manage your peak times. You know, you know, when you, you have the afternoon crash, I do. I am not an afternoon person. If you want me to do it really well, talk to me at six in the morning, seven in the morning, send it to me. I, I will be blazing three o'clock, four o'clock. I'm, I'm good, but not as good at seven o'clock. So knowing your, knowing yourself and your own vibes and sort of what your rhythm is, some people have, you know, maybe they're night owls and that's okay too. Uh, so managing the energy, managing your peak moments and using tools. I think using the tools that just work for you. Um, it shouldn't be cookie cutter. So I like apps, but maybe you need a paper notebook, you know, to right. write down what you need. So it just depends on who you are. Right. Before we go into some of the tools and, and solutions yep. there, um, you know, I want to talk a, just another couple points about this energy management piece. Yes. Um, because also uh, it's, it's, you know, you talked about in the morning, right? You can get a lot more done. Yes. I know for me, and, and maybe you can expand upon this, like for me, it's also different types of work at different times. So yeah. like, I'm great because I need concentration. Like I've got that energy to concentrate in the morning so that I can do like content creation or research, yep. but I really like to fill my afternoons with interacting with people like that brings <laughs> me energy. So at times when I might tend to be lower energy, I do those activities that, that boost my energy. 
And that makes a lot of sense um, to know when the difficult work, when you need to tackle that harder, sort of mentally heavy stuff. For me, that's still morning. <laughs> right. It has to be, you know, major in the morning, the content creation, the writing and putting the thoughts together. I need morning time for that. If I have to write something at the end of the day, I can still do it and I can do it well, just not as well as if it were earlier in the day. So I think knowing the activities that energize you, and by the way, perfectly okay to get the energy by stepping away from your desk, right? So in the afternoon, I step away from my desk and I usually, if I can't go outside because I also don't like being cold and right now it's frigid, no, I, hate it. I will, I hate it. So I will just walk around my house or I'll do some jumping jacks or more recently I've been meditating, which is very different than jumping jacks. Yeah. It's different, sort of energy. different energy and some days call for, okay, Deb, deep breath, just focusing, focus in on the breath take two minutes. I don't mean 10 minutes, just two minutes, just to reset, refocus, getting some water, just getting up from the space often will re-energize me and get me to say, okay, I've reset. I've got another 10 minutes to go. So I usually like to work in small increments of time. At least that's what I tell myself. What I are the increments that you, that are right for you? Perfect for me is 45 to 60 minutes. Okay. And sometimes 90 minutes if I'm writing, 90 minutes is much better it because I get in a flow and the words are just pouring out of me. And then other times I, you know what, just 10 minutes, I just need the 10 minutes. But usually what happens is I convince myself it's 10 minutes and then it ends up being somewhere around 30. So I, I double my output just by saying, okay, 10 minutes, that's all you have to give. Nothing more, nothing less, set your timer, off you go. Right. And it's, if we wait for motivation to drop in our lap, we'll never do it, right? right? Motivation is amazing, but we can still get work done without it. And that 10 minute sort of, it's quick. I can do, I can do lots of things in 10 minutes. Imagine that, just cross them off and get going. I can write a paragraph in 10 minutes. Right. You know, so I convince myself and I also picture myself being successful at the end of those 10 minutes the feeling I will have when I put in what I say I'm going to put in. And because I know that I will probably put in 30 minutes, I say, you know what, you're going to be really happy that you did this right now. You know, you're going to feel great when you're done. And that feeling that hasn't happened yet, but will also propels me forward. So there's a combination of things that I think I know about myself that I, you know, a combination of things that I do to help myself. And I think for people watching, they need to figure out what those things are for them. So I'm a firm believer in talking to myself. I may not answer all the time, but I do talk myself through situations. And I think if we know what those things that work for us are, we need to create a routine around them. Absolutely, I love that. So for you procrastinators out there, you <laughs> don't have to wait for the motivation. These are strategies that you can use to, uh, to get started. And then once you're started, right, momentum, oh, happens. Yeah. momentum just starts to come. And if it doesn't come, it's okay. But you put in your 10 minutes or your 20 minutes, right? And then you can move on to the next thing. Right. And I, and I think you made an important point. And that's why I asked you what's your time frame uh, for your time blocks or your your yep. segments is is for people to understand what their attention span is, you know, oh, yeah. given that they're you know blocking out taking away some of the distractions or whatever how long can they focus because yeah. some people just have short attention spans and 20 minutes is a better block for them whereas right. other people can can do a 90 minute stretch no problem right so right. it's good to know who you are and and work with your energy type and and maybe every 20 to 30 minutes you need a, a quick energizer right and then you can get back into it yeah there's no cookie cutter here and there's nothing wrong with you. And so I can't sit for 60 minutes. There's nothing wrong with you. Right. Okay, then get up. <laughs> don't sit right. for Don't torture yourself. Um, make well, we do, therapy. right? We'll just stay there and we'll be like, no. <laughs> don't do that. Like, don't do that to yourself at all. Use the tools that you have, but make the tools work for you. Make the strategies work for you. Don't try to fit yourself into them. If you have to fit yourself into them, maybe you need a different strategy, one that really sinks with you. So that yeah. takes some trial and error, of course, um, to maybe testing a few things and really testing them for a while to see if they work or not. 
and then, you know, really building a solid routine. So that's really what we're trying to do, right? Build productivity habits that stick, that work. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, you, you mentioned something earlier also of, you know, um, those breaks, right? Those breaks yep. are important. And, uh, and give yourself permission to take those breaks because without those breaks, we don't realize that our energy is, you know, hits that peak and then, oh, yeah. and then, and then starts to go down and yeah. we just, um, you know, it's kind of like that frog that, that slowly boils in the, in the warm water. Oh. <laughs> we have to know ourselves and, and really yes. make ourselves go for the breaks. I mean, I love the fact that these watches now they'll, you know, my, my That's watch right. will it. tell me to get yeah. up and. And, and yes. sometimes it's just a matter of changing the environment too, right? Do you find, uh, like, I love oh, that. Yeah. Sometimes I just work better at the kitchen table and sometimes I work better in my office. Like I need to mix yeah. it up. I love to mix it up too. I mean, I, so right now I'm in my basement um, and I'm here because, you know, I'm on a video call with you today and I, you know, it's, it's bright and airy down here, but it's also really cold. <laughs> so I can't be here for very long. Yeah. I've got it. <laughs> Peter off to my left, you know, this, I have my whole setup and then I'll go upstairs and I'll work in my office, which right now, you know, to be honest, is a complete wreck because I was just planning a birthday party for my kiddo, right? So all of her stuff is in my office. So then I'll move myself over to the kitchen counter and I'll stand. Some yeah. days I, I need to be upright. So just know that just because the strategy works today doesn't mean that it's going to work tomorrow because tomorrow is a different day. You may be tackling something different that requires that sort of movement or shift in environment. You know, back when we could all go off to the local cafe and work, which I used to do all the time. Yeah. I love that. I love the hum mm. of people talking. I can't hear what they're saying, but I hear them. There's this hum. I hear plates. I hear dishes. I've got my coffee and I know I can go get some, you know, good eats if I have to. And I'm in a zone and I loved that. So, you know, try to recreate that now. It's a little trickier, but, you know. Well, nice actually, thing. did you know that you can, you can play different audios, right? Yeah, you can go that. on to yes. like Spotify or, um, yes. uh, I forget what it is, the FM one where they have specific uh, channels that you channels can just for that. like coffee shop. And it's just Pandora. like background, yeah. background yeah. coffee shop noise. Yeah. So I, I love all of that. So I think play around with it. And just because today you're not in that vibe. Okay. I think we beat ourselves up way too much. We probably get a lot more done than we realize, but we also have that negative talk happening. Um, and I'm guilty of it too. So it's not that I'm perfect. It's just, I have a few more tools that perhaps are at my disposal. And I, again, talk to myself a lot and I say, well, 10 minutes is better than zero minutes. <laughs> right. So use whatever those things are and know yourself, know your own sort of rhythm um, and how you best work and work with that. Don't try to change. That's my, that's my personal opinion anyway. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So I want to ask you, you know, uh, a lot of people, they, they think in terms of, you know, like a shortcut, like what, you know, I want to get the results and I want to get it fast. Right. So I have been asking the guests to share their favorite shortcut. Like if you just have one thing that makes everything easier for you, hmm. uh, maybe it's an app, maybe it's a way of thinking, maybe it's something you tell yourself, what would your shortcut be? I don't know that it's a shortcut, but it has become a habit. And that is just planning ahead. Just a little bit of, and I don't mean, you know, a 10 page production. I mean, okay, what do I have coming up the next day? How much can I accomplish right now in just taking 10 minutes to just look ahead, look at my next day, look at my calendar. I'm using a digital calendar, so that helps. I can do some searching. If I need to, I can use a keyword that will cut down on my, you know, sifting through a paper calendar. So for me, that works. But it's that last maybe five to 10 minutes of the evening before of just looking ahead, not just at the next day, but then also maybe a little bit beyond. So I'm prepared. And I find that when I don't do that, I miss things like appointments or, or I'm thinking, wait a minute, is there something coming up? And there's that nagging feeling, which I don't like. Yeah. So it's just a awful, like there's something looming that doesn't feel good. So I make a point of every night I check my calendar for the coming day. And then I look just another day or so beyond that to see what's next. Um, I do have a to-do list that I like to keep. And I that's on paper, by the way. 
I love paper to-do lists. Because Ew, I don't know why down, I, I also come back to paper. I So I'm an app girl. I love apps. You want to talk apps? We'll talk apps forever. Oh, but we're going to talk apps. I love this notebook. I can take pages out and I can remove them and rearrange them. I write down my to-dos. I cross them out. I feel like a rock star. <laughs> paper. But if I have an appointment, that's digital. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, you know, you work with what you have, but yeah, for me, it's just, just that little bit of preparation the night before. So it's not a shortcut. It's a habit, but it's a quick one. Cause what I'm not shortcut, right. I mean, in the context of like, it takes you a couple minutes yeah. and by right. doing that, very long. it, it yeah. creates efficiency for those days that you're doing it. Right. So that, is, that is correct. And okay. it's something that I do every night. And to make sure that I do it, I actually have a repeated reminder in my phone that says, check your calendar. Because there are days when you are just going and going and going and the end of the day is here. And when it's really hectic, you sometimes lose sight of those things that ground you, your routines. And so mm -hmm. I build in the backup to the mental memory break, <laughs> the sort of I'm stressed today and I've forgotten to do something. And I just have, them, have a reminder that says, okay, check your calendar. Just look at it. You don't have yeah. to do anything. Just look at it. And if you're looking at it, then you'll figure out what you have to do the next day. Do you have to be prepared? I knew what time I had to be here today. I showed up. I was ready. You know, that because I checked my calendar the night before. So I'd say just five or 10 minutes at the end of the day. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Let's talk apps. Let's talk about apps a little bit because people okay. love apps. And I do want to put this out there for everybody who's listening. Okay. A tool is not going to solve all of your problems. It it's a not. thinking process. Yes. Tools do really help, but I, I just want to make sure that people are aware that you have to also step back and look at your approach and see which tools are going to fit. Absolutely. You. Not that yeah. uh, they get too hung up on that. Oh, but. please. So before you even look at an app or download an app, figure out why you need it and figure out if you need it, because maybe you don't. Um, your friend tells you this app works for him or her. That's great, but they're different than you are. Right. Can you look at it? Can you test it? Absolutely. But why do you need it? So I like telling people to figure out what is it that you're trying to solve? You know, we're solving for why, you know, go back to my right. In high school, right? What are you trying to solve? What's the issue? And then map out what the steps are. So what, you know, people, the buzzword is workflow. That's pretty much what it is. Step by step by step, step one, step two. What is it that you're trying to do? Where's the hole? Do you have a hole? And if the answer is yes, is technology the best way to fill it? If the answer is yes, then go searching for the best tech tools to help you to do that. The answer doesn't always equal yes, right? And if you're tech averse, that's find an analog way of doing it. That's okay too. But figure out the problem first and if technology can solve it for you. And then if the answer is yes, go get it. So I absolutely agree with you on that. 100%. Awesome. So share yeah. some of the tools. If you were to say today, I'm going to uh, take your computer and your phone and I'm going to wipe them clean oh and you're going to add them back. What are the first apps that you're going to add back outside of your mail, your calendar, right? Okay. So outside of that, what are, what are those apps that you rely on day to day? So Evernote is one um, because, so I use it for writing. Evernote is my, the first place I go to write. It's my hub for any kind of writing of any, of any sort. So definitely like that. And it's also sort of a great place to put all of the brain dumps and the ideas that pop up when you're supposed to be doing something important and they float to your brain and they're like the shiny squirrel <laughs> that crosses by your desk. They try to pull your attention away. Evernote is a great place to just sort of throw them in there. So um, why Evernote? You know, I've all, I just, I started with Evernote and it was simple. It was a clean interface. This is years ago. I mean, mm -hmm. it has since changed and updated quite a bit. Um, I built a routine around Evernote and writing and it just stuck because it worked, it worked for me. And I loved that clean sort of non-distracting interface that it, that it built around writing. Um, I love that it's robust and that you can use it for other things too. I think that's where people get a little tripped up with it because unlike- Use it for things it's not really designated for, is that what you mean? Well, so Trello is project management and it's Kanban style. So right. boards and lists, it's, it's set up for you. Right. You sort of use the templates as you see fit. Evernote is like this 
blank canvas and then you tweak and you fix and you, it's like it's like building something of your own there's nothing really set up there are templates now these days back in, when i first started using it we didn't have that but you still sort of have to come up with your own way of using it so it's i think it's not as intuitive in that way but for those of us that have been using it for a really long time, I think we've sort of built that habit around it. And for me, that certainly is true. So I connect it very much, very strongly to writing and the brain dump and okay. even um, sort of collecting things that I want to refer to later. Evernote is sort of my, if I had a magazine basket of things I wanted to read and then sort of reread again, it, I would probably throw it in Evernote because it's sort of my long-term depository. Yeah. And then I would use an app like, say, I haven't used it in a while because Evernote has really sort of taken over, but Pocket or Instapaper were other tools like that where those would be my short-term reading. Those little articles that came across my desk that I just wanted to see, but when I was done with them, I would just delete them. My workflow has changed a little bit, so now I don't really need those two anymore, and I just sort of focus on Evernote primarily. Um, so that's one of them. Okay, before you go on, I just want to say yeah. I use Evernote too. Um, okay. I've been using it for a long time. Um, and what I like about it is uh, is the searchability. And I think that's oh, why perfect. when you talk about dumping everything in there, that's oh, yeah. what I do is I take notes in it and I dump it Easy. because I hate the search functionality in my I Mac. Know. I hate it. It <laughs> does not bring up. Like it said when I went to Mac years and years and years ago, yep. they said that it was better than Windows. It's not. They're all the same. Yeah. But Evernote, I can, I, without even tagging, it'll find me the Don't words and the text. And it's just yes. so robust. And, and that's why I like it. Is it just I can find, you know, maybe there's yeah. one word that I know that I used and, and mm -hmm. it'll bring up four, four notes instead of yeah. 100 notes that I need to go through. It's perfect for search. I mean, that's such a great point to bring up. It's powerful. You can search inside of a PDF. You can search text inside of an image. You can save various kinds of content like audio and you can type it in. You can do handwritten notes and take a picture of that. I mean, it, it's very versatile, but you kind of need to know how you want to use it for it to really be effective. And I think that's where other tools like say Trello sometimes, because you know they, it comes already ready it's prepared and you sort of use their, you know, you use the interface that you get. So again, you know, find the one that, that works best for you, but yeah, Evernote search is amazing. Just really good. So what are, what's, what's, what are the, some of the other tools that you would add in first? Um, I like any do um, it is a task manager. Mm -hmm. uh, what I like about it when I first started using it, I used it with a friend and colleague. Um, we were doing a talk together. And there were certain parts of the talk that we were all, we were both responsible for. So she was using it. Uh, hey, Kim, shout out to Kim Moser. Um, she then assigned me inside of Edidu a task. And when I checked it off, she got pinged. And so I was like, this is amazing. I loved it. This was before, you know, I started using Basecamp and some of those other tools. But this one was just really a nice way to collaborate with someone else on something very specific and I wouldn't have to, and she didn't either. She didn't have to ask me, did you do this or did you do that? It was just right. obvious because she would be notified whenever I did. So I loved it for that purpose. It also has a personal feature that I love, which is a grocery list. And, he, and it's, it's just a standard list that I just keep recreating. You know, once I've, and you can check things off. So when you check it off, it gets a line <laughs> right through it. I love that. Not the same as writing it, but close enough. <laughs> so I love that grocery list and I'm able to organize. I know this sounds really silly, but for my brain, I love You're to organized. organize. Come on. I, I just do. I love organizing. So it's by aisle, by type of item, produce, pantry items. I can do that and I love it. And it works well with my brain. So any do would be one that I would absolutely put right back there. So calendar, Evernote, any do. One more. Hmm. I'm going to say not necessarily productivity, but Twitter. Okay. And I say Twitter because in this time of COVID where I don't see people as much as I could in the past, I'm able to maintain contact with folks and also meet new people. 
Um, and I found, I'd say probably over the last six months, Twitter has just been really great for conversation. Um, so when I'm taking a break, I can have that conversation. So Twitter, because I know Twitter can be a time suck, I use Twitter as my reward. I do my 10 minutes, my 20 minutes, my 90 minutes. Twitter is my reward, right? So I have to put in the work first so I can have the conversation. But I'd say for something kind of fun, uh, which I do think also helps with your productivity, you can't be all the time going, I would I would put Twitter in there. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. For the last segment, I wanted to talk about, so one of the things that you have for the guests, yeah. I think is a uh, your, you have a time tracker or- yeah. uh, Yep, time tracking worksheet time tracking worksheet. So let's talk about time tracking and, and why should people time track? And, yeah. you know, let's, let's talk, let's start there. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes we, we know that we need to improve our quote unquote management of time or how we use our time. And sometimes you don't quite understand what it is that's taking our attention away. Because that's basically what it is when you're using time, you use it for a purpose. And if you sit down at your computer to start writing and then Twitter is up on the screen and then you notice that your attention is just sort of whoop, squirrel, <laughs> squirrel, <laughs> you're moving away. Some people aren't aware of where the time goes. Sometimes, sometimes you feel really busy and at the end of the day, you were exhausted, but you're not quite sure what you've gotten done. <laughs> I think everybody I'm, can relate to that. We right? can all relate to that, right? So time tracking and seeing where the minutes go, the data doesn't lie, right? The numbers do not lie. Right. If you have an hour to complete something and the hour is up and you haven't gotten anything done, well, let's assess. Let's see where the time went. Because when you know where the time went, you can make a plan to adjust that. So a few minutes ago, I said Twitter can be a time suck. All of social media can be a time suck, really, honestly. We all know that. So I use it as my reward. That's my strategy. So I can't get to that till I do this. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know that it's Twitter, maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's someone who calls, maybe it's the dishes in the sink. If you work from home and you can't stand seeing dishes in the sink, hello, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so everything has to be clean before you start working. Um, so tracking your time gives you the opportunity to figure out where it goes, what's working and what needs to be addressed. And so, so for me, time tracking shouldn't be this, oh gosh, it's awful. It's, it's really an opportunity to make some change, some good change and to keep, keep what's working. So um, tracking your time, whether you do it manually or you use um, a, you know, a spreadsheet or something, you know, put in you know, at 6 a.m. I woke up and then I went down to get coffee at 6.30 and sort of map out your day because it might also show you if you're working too much, right? And not spending enough time doing other things outside of work mm -hmm. because then overwork brings us closer to burnout and exhaustion, right? So we're looking for, dare I say, a balance <laughs> I, or an integration. I prefer that word. I don't think balance is the right word. Um, you want to be able to have a nice integration of work and life, mm -hmm. but you're not overdoing it in any one area and that you're not um, overdoing it at work and sort of just keeping yourself frazzled because then you can't be productive. So time tracking. Well, it comes back to really managing helpful. your energy, right? We're full circle all, around all of it. really about yeah. managing your energy. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, track the time, you know, look at where it goes, absolutely. Great, so, um, so what's that link that they can go to and how can they get more information about you and your services and maybe some videos and things that you've got? Sure. So I can be found just about everywhere on the web at D. Allison Lee. My website is dallisonlee.com. I'll give you the link so that you can put it in the show notes for that time tracking worksheet. I also have a free download on my website that they can take a look at for, you guessed it, apps, <laughs> productivity apps. Okay. Um, so yes, everywhere online, I am D. Allison Lee. Awesome. So you're going to, you've got a free time tracking uh, worksheet and you've got all your favorite apps that are listed. I've got, there. I've got my top five downloads. So if you, top five apps, if you wanted to take your company online or to be productive online, there are five apps that I think everybody needs to have. So that's also a free download on my website. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here, Deb. It was a lot of fun and uh, really informative. Oh, thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. And thank you all for being here. So I hope you took some notes and you wrote down some tips and really what we're looking for from each one of these episodes that you're listening to is if you find one thing, just one thing that's going to help you to improve the way you approach how you do your work or your play, uh, something that helps you to think differently and to to be more productive in, in what you're doing. That's our goal. And with that, you should be able to take back time, whether that means, uh, you know, work less or whether it means work smarter or whatever it means to you. That's that's our mission here is to help you to be more productive and to to get to your goals faster. So thank you so much for supporting the show. Uh, make sure that you're going and, and you're you're checking us out on YouTube and all the different locations that uh, that that we've got access to and uh, make sure you subscribe because not just and you can comment and also uh, make sure that you're here for the next episode it's every friday uh, we release a new episode so my name is penny zanker and this is take back time we'll see you in the next episode